<laughs> and after the um, after we do all that, we still have to come back to the neighborhood as a whole and say this is the I real design, not just the concept. Yeah, so, <laughs> and you'll have a chance. Well, you know, we do a dog park. I, I'll, no, I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Originally, it wasn't going to be a kids park. Right now, um, okay. But that was something that was also on the on the commission level that said that they had gotten feedback to look at putting kids' equipment in it, but we don't necessarily have to, and that'll be decided on when we meet again, because okay. um, this is just concept. And um, when we get closer to design, because this is gonna take a while. This is not, just like this last project, I mean, you're looking at three, four years down the line, because there's funding involved, there's um, uh, construction, permitting, purchasing, it takes time and time What and time. kind of park are you looking at, or are you thinking about? We'll, we'll, we'll show you. It's a, it, it, Really, the focus is on the waterway. So have to have a, a, an observation deck on the corner there, and have and then have a little walkway around it. And if you want to do children's equipment, you put it in the middle. If you don't, then you just put some mounts. So we'll see. Can we just walk. We have heard that the neighborhood wants children's play equipment, but that that came from no, that no, came no, from I, the mayor. I've though. talked to everybody in the neighborhood. Nobody <laughs> wants. Well, I'm it, the one with the small yeah. kids, and I don't want it. <laughs> well, if that's the way it comes out eventually, then that's what we end up with. We end up with, now. There's other ways to do kids play stuff without putting equipment on. You can do mounds, which is what we're going to looking at doing berms and problem, things like that. The problem there, I think, is going to be a park. That's why you don't want anything big there. You want something that's just for the neighborhood to walk over. Um, but uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be the neighbors that walk over. Well, unfortunately, so it happens now because you get the people that fish there now, right, on the on the bridge. I live right in front. Yeah. I've so lived there for over t 10 years. Right. Well, every so, time I'm there, there's somebody fishing. So. <laughs> not really. I mean, I know the people that fish. I've met the guy that fished. He asked me permission. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm standing in front of my house. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it, it's one guy that I've seen the fish. I think you got some kids from the UM that come and fish. Right. And that's about it. And, and a guy with his kid. I mean, I literally live across the street. That park space, we were talking to our green space management side of the city, and it has a lot of um, um, ficus fungimina, which they're removing. And we actually walked the site that Sarah did the door hangers, and our, our team was there. And it's a nice shaded canopy. Oh, no, it's, it's a beautiful place, but I mean. So the, they're proposing the removal just of Just the traffic yeah. as it is. Yeah. You go during the day, but go at in the morning, go on the weekends when the oh, people... Oh, yeah. When the people the street, I probably parked right on your swale when I was there, and I was trying not to get hit by anybody. Yeah, yeah. Around people, the people drive like an animal. We've yeah. already told them. They come out there for a week, and then they're back at it. In the morning, yeah. on, on Saturday mornings, yeah. like my dog got killed two years ago. They ran him over. So, I mean, oh. <laughs> that's the problem. Nobody stands there and tries to fix the... Uh, right. What, you know, because I live literally across the street, 800 blue. So when we did the research of that original property, what it was meant to do when we looked at the plot design, it was actually supposed to provide, right between the neighbor and the, the canal space, supposed to provide a bridge um, that provides access to the other side. That's why part of that is right away of that park space, which is really interesting. So at one point in time, it was designed. It was going to be a roadway. Yeah, it was going to be a roadway. Oh, and the roundabout is not really a roundabout. Yeah. It's just, and I understand the fire truckers, we've been at this since when they're doing the speed bumps. Oh, yeah. What? This year, you had, you had a car going into my neighbor's um, wall. So, I, mean, I know they're piloting different things. Up here in the North Gables, they had, um, they did, uh, it's like a certain type of pavement that kind of creates, like, not the bumps, but um, what is it called? What is it, that brick pavement that they're piloting for traffic mitigation? Well, yeah, no, we, they did it on Biltmore. Yeah. Which is after the roundabout. They put three of them to calm down that way. Yeah. Speed tables? Not the speed tables. The speed tables arrived. Um, they're not a favorite of the police department. But they did the uh, right off of... Actually, right where Gratiano's is coming from Lejeune, they did the, um, the paved street. So it basically just causes the car to kind of like rumble when it crosses over, and it normally causes them to slow down a little bit, and it changes the color of the pavement. So they found that to work 
better. All right. Anyone else on Zoom other than yeah. city staff? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we'll get started. It's going to be a small, intimate meeting. Oh, yeah. I think the, the neighbor on the other corner is coming. Oh, that's right. He was here. No. No, no. no the gentleman from Alaba. He was here and he had to leave. I saw him outside. Oh, he said he was coming. He, returning. he said he was coming back. He was, he was purchasing a home near the uh -huh. yeah. No, no, I'm talking about. The next I'm across the other one that faces yeah. on the other side of the road. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then, immediate neighbor, besides, is going to join as well. I know they're not here yet because they're. But he, but he saw the concept already. I think so. Um, all right, let's just go ahead. All right. So, um, my name is Fred Cusero. I'm the community recreation director. Oh, we got someone coming. Hi, welcome. Is over? No, 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 no. Oh, I mean, you were telling me that. Is it, is it no, they had one before. No, there was two. There was two meetings. We oh, have okay. one. Oh, okay. We have one at six and this one at seven. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, mean, five minutes. Right. I can't believe we can make it. Yeah. I guess they just peer out the window every now and then make sure nobody gets stuck. I've been trying to walk through the door. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, the other gentleman, was trying to come in that way. Usually you're going to be No, we have to enter through the front. Uh, we can exit through there, but we have to enter. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for taking yeah. time out of your evening to join us. All right. So, um, welcome. My name is Fred Cusar. I'm the Community Recreation Director for the City. Uh, this is Carolina Vester. She's the Assistant Director, Community Recreation Director for the City. And Sarah Espino is uh, the Administrative Assistant for the, the Department. Um, and she's also famous. She was on the cover. I don't know what happened. The other one. The other oh, part. she wasn't on the cover. Because I was just deleted a lot. Oh, you so changed the cover. Door I, I yeah, she, she, <laughs> she was one of the door hanger um, providers. Mm -hmm. So quick, quick um, meeting information. This is a, a hybrid meeting. Um, we have a couple people on Zoom. I think it's just city staff that's on Zoom right now um, and live. The meeting will be recorded and it'll be available on our website. So if people want to know what presentation is and what we talked about, they'll be able to get there. At the very end, at the end of the presentation, obviously we'll have a discussion. Any questions you have, we'll, we'll discuss them at that time. And there's also um, the opportunity for um, further questions past today We'll give you the uh, the um, email address if you have any other questions, maybe something you forgot, something else you want to talk about, um, and we'll give that to you at the end of the presentation. So the reason why we're here is um, the state, which is the, it's called FERDAP, the Florida Recreational Development Assistance Program. They have a grant program um, where they award monies to different municipalities and governments for um, different things, whether it's development of outdoor spaces or purchasing of land for parks. And um, it's a tight window. They give it two weeks. Um, and one of the requirements is to try is to go to the neighborhood to um, inform the neighborhood that you're going for a grant from that particular project. Um, so um, we're looking at possibly getting $200,000. Um, that's the grant. With the grant, you do have to have a matching. So the city has to provide $200,000 if you get $200,000 from from the government. We have done FERDAP grants in the past. We just completed a project, um, Salvador Park, which is a big playground project, and we got 175000 for it um, from a grant, and the rest of it was, was city. Um, that was a much bigger scope than anything that you'll see here. Um, but uh, we, we have done it in the past. I've probably done five or six different FERDAP grants, and um, they range in uh, <coughs> value from 50 to 200. We'll be looking at 200 here, hoping we get it. Um, it's decided by the legislature, and the, what happens is the state government decides we're going to give X amount of money to FERDAP. All the projects, we all apply, we get points, they're in a, they're in a line, and if you have $32 million that the state gives you, you go down the line until you hit 32, and whoever's those top rated, they're the ones that get it. It's pretty, it's numerical and competitive based. Um, so we will see how we do. Um, when you look for grants, you have to try to get um, find the, the priority areas for um, the statewide recreation plan. And depending on your location, we're in South Florida and our population density, which is high, um, the priorities for the grants are if you have something that promotes health and well-being, uh, public access, accessibility, and connectivity, 
Um, those are the two, and resource management and stewardship, which is priority four, those are the three that really hit this part because you have the waterway there, you know, it's a piece of land that um, hasn't been open to the public in the past, um, and it will provide walking areas and things, so a lot of those priorities will be hit with this project. So a quick history of it, um, it has been a park site, always has been, but it hasn't been allowed to be used by the public, um, by police order. Uh, something that's not in there, a, a few years back we did have some residents that brought up why we weren't able to use it, we looked into it. Um, as it's constructed now, it is a risk because of the drop off into the waterway on the edges. Um, so it was uh, stated through our risk management and, and, and our officials that in order to have the park be accessible by the public, it had to have the proper barriers and had to be safe. So this project has been a priority of our commission. They have talked about it openly in commission meetings and have asked um, that we move forward in, in, in uh, making this a park. They approved funding. There's funding close to $400,000 that um, has come, is coming up now. We're getting it now. Um, and so it's one of those um, uh, projects that has, has been on the radar. Um, now, right now, it's, it's still by police order that people don't go into the park. I mean, I'm sure people do, but you know, if they do, if the police see them, they get them out. It's not, it, it's not, the, the signage is still up, the chain is still up, it's not saying, hey, come on in. Um, as we talked earlier before the meeting started, it, the original property was purchased um, in 1949. And as you'll see as we go through the, the site plan, there, there is right of way through that area. It was originally going to be a bridge across a waterway as a road um, back in 1949 that it never became one. So this is the, um, the projected area of the park. As you can see, um, there's some space over to the right of that, to, and that is where the right-of-way was. That is where um, the roadway uh, was originally going to be. So right now it's still plotted as right-of-way. And that's owned by nobody. So nobody. It's owned by the city, but you can't, so you can't build on it. Uh, you can't put any hardscape structures because it was always designated as right of way space. Um, but it's owned by the city. The parcel is correct, but you can't build on it. So if whatever we build, that's why Director Cassara was saying you just try to target this area here, right. because you can't build anything on here. There, and there is also, um, you know, uh, discussion on on the domain of that because it's right away, but. It, was supposed to be used as a roadway. Um, so that's the, the discussion as to how far you can build on it. Um, and that's, you do have to have discussions with the neighbor on that because the right of way is, is right through there and it affects that property as well. So these are just some quick um, shots of the north view. I think, it, do, we, do we see your house there? Is that your house right there? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. See? This one? Yep. There we go. And his is the one. Over here? Right. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful property, folks. I parked right over here in your square, so I apologize. Now I'm going to get by a car. Cross the street. So, um, so those are the two. That's the South View Park. And so here you can see, so this is the access point. We were saying that it's being used for maintenance. This is where the crew normally pulls up. They park, and then they, they use the... Yeah, they used the to clean. They used to go around and... Clean the canal. No, they do. They do. I mean, this is literally when I was on site last week. Yeah, you can I, see him parked here, and this is the boat he was I using. I haven't seen that boat move. <laughs> uh, I saw him literally come up, so maybe I was just but lucky. But he's not be lucky. I've actually seen it move too. I, I, we must be lucky. We go there in the middle. Have, it was one that they picked up garbage. And uh -huh. I don't know well, what. It was a pontoon. It was a bigger boat. Yes, you're right. They used to have the pontoon, but it sunk. <laughs> so wow. this is this is the one that they that's, use now. That's what I need to invest because the waterway is dirty. I think they're trying to do the dredging waterway through a contract, by the way. I think that's, is that's no, on the horizon. No, it's, not, it's just garbage. Yeah. And, pine, and coconuts. So there's the east view. This is the other neighbor right over mm -hmm. here. The, yeah. They think it's back here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So originally, we had a designer um, that gave us a concept. 
Now, there has been quite a few um, stops and starts with the concept, because at one point, there was a discussion to maybe do um, terracing along the waterway, you know, similar to like what UM has, where you have um, a slab up a little bit, another slab, and it goes into the park, so you, you wouldn't have any fencing around it, but it would go all the way to the water. Problem with that is, is with king tide and high tide, it, it becomes susceptible to perhaps wildlife, um, especially if you have crocodiles in the water and everything else. So um, that became a, a discussion as to whether to do that. Um, so we looked at what the one of the original designs was, which is which is this one. So this one has, if you notice, all the way. I think there's a slide that's a little bit more. No. I mean, I, yeah, sorry, but I just wanted to show before I zoom in, this is the right-of-way. Sure, okay, so that, that's where the right-of-way is. So if you go from half of it over, th that's, you know, you can develop stuff there. Then the other half... It's the neighbor. <laughs> well, in theory. Um, but the walkway, you know, could still be part of the right-of-way. I think there's a... There you go. This, this one's a little bit more, yeah. So over in the corner, uh, that's the observation deck that we looked at for the waterway. Could have some seating, and it, you could look out over the waterway. Um, then you'd have fencing all the way around the perimeter. You'd have the, still that service entrance for the dock for the service boat. You'd have walkways throughout. Um, there's some picnic tables and seating. If you, uh, you can see the one picnic table there. And then another one over there. Yeah. And then, that one wouldn't go in because... Right. And then there's one that's hidden over here. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, and then there's some benches. Now, the kind of circle-y, loopy stuff, now that originally was to look at doing some sort of mounding and berms and be like a natural active area. Um, as we were talking before the meeting, one of the things that we had heard and it had been mentioned um, at a city commission meeting was that the neighborhood was and I don't know who, so I will tell you there is no confirmation, but we were, we were asked to look at whether we put child equipment, uh, play equipment in there. Um, now, we don't necessarily have to, um, but we'll show you what the possibilities are and we'll show you the process. This is just the beginning. This is just showing you concepts so we can get to the grant. And um, we're at the very start and it, it takes a long time. It's a long process to get this park to fruition. So. Um, there will be a lot of things that, that we'll be able to discuss. Now, um, because one of the things that you have to look at, if you do um, uh, play equipment, you do have to have fencing somewhere along the southern border. Because right now that wall is not high enough by code to keep children from climbing over. So that's one thing that we look at. Um, and and you it's have to designated add historic, so it's not going anywhere. No, that, that, that wall will stay. Um, it has to. Um, and actually, to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to take it away. I like it. I think it's nice. I hope you guys do too. It's, it, it, it's with the character of the city, and um, we think it would be great to keep it there. Um, I think the walkways give you, you know, a nice pattern there and, and takes you around, and it leads you to the, to the waterway access. And just like this, with no play equipment, I don't see this being a gigantic destination for anybody that doesn't live in the neighborhood. Um, you might get some bikers. <laughs> some exercisers that like to bike and I'll stop here. Um, I just don't see the destination point for someone with a car to come because, other than maybe looking at the waterway for a second, but it's not a, it's not a gigantic. No, no, this right. is another neighborhood designed park, so we don't design for parking infrastructure because there's no space that allows for that. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, but they're gonna park, where do you park now? They're gonna park in my house. They're, they're gonna park right on that grass, they're gonna park on his grass, and they're gonna park in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> like they do now, and well, I gotta if, if throw people have, out of there. Well, so our our hope is to not have that kind of destination. If you do uh, curves or something. Well, and that's the other thing. We can always look at um, on swales, working with our landscape development team, and they're actually on online, working with them on ground cover for certain areas. Like swales are public property, so maybe there's ground cover where cars can't go on it. It's like you know, if there's landscaping, you know, low brush. All kinds of different things that we've done that we've done in different areas to kind of deter from parking, um, depending on those areas. Is that whole area from the bridge back? Yeah. Just park them. Right. I mean, it looks a lot wider here than it really is because I tried to park my vehicle here and it's like almost no, impossible. Yeah. But you can't. To the, to this side over here. Over here. No, go the other way. Other way. 
right there, that whole tree, mm -hmm. there's no water, so it gets parked. Oh, well, there's little walls there, there but they park. Yeah. yeah, but I can barely park my car. You, you no. can park there. No, no. You can park there. You can park there. No, no, no. I, I park there. You can yeah, park yeah. there. I park there when I've done a park site visit. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I park there's, there. there's enough parking space. No, no. I, I, I have, I have park parked park. there. So, you know, and that's one thing. As we go through and we do a design and we get further into the design and when we come back to the neighborhood, if there is a um, sentiment to put ground cover on there so there's no parking, then you do that. Um, there probably will because something that you don't see here is this would be flip flop. So this is right now the service side. The service side would have to move over here and then the pedestrian entrance would be here. So you wouldn't be able to park and cover the pedestrian entrance right. and block that. So based on the design, uh, you know, there will be a combination of ground cover and then access to get into the park. So it needs to be clear and open. You can't just park and block the access to the park. So what we're, what we're doing is we're kind of giving you all the possibilities, um, and that's what we're going to put in for the grant, but um, we can go to the next slide. I'm just going to show you some things. doesn't mean it's all going in, but they're possibilities. We, we, just, we just had a meeting like this a second ago, and, and you know, we just, it's just a menu. Um, you know, the picnic table and the benches, those will go in there if we put those in there, and that's our city standard right now. Um, the trash can, that's our city standard. If we put a sign in there, um, it's usually with that plaque signage. It doesn't necessarily mean that we'll put one in there. Um, if we do a water fountain, that's the water fountain. It's got a bottle filler. It's got things. Um, if we do a mister, that's kind of misters that we've been putting in. If we do a bike rack, that's the bike rack that we've been putting in, or the blue one that we have at Venetian Pool. Um, and those are the dogway stations. And if we had life bottles, which I don't think that would be for this park, that's what they would look like. So the designer mentioned the idea of, for the observation deck, maybe doing some just LED, like landscape kind of lighting. Underneath, and underneath the rail, kind of, just to, to, to illuminate the, the, the base of, uh, of the deck. Some of the other um, things that go into um, our parks, on the top corner, that's our flexi pave walkway, which is, um, you know, the walkways that we showed, they could be concrete, they could be flexi pave, they could be asphalt. Um, the flexi pave is very soft. It's soft, it's easier on walking. Um, it's a little more expensive. It's a little more um, maintenance uh, over, over the long haul than concrete and asphalt. Although sometimes, in terms of cleanliness, the flexi pave is easier because you don't have to pressure clean it as much. It, it, it maintains, it doesn't get dirty as quick. Um, and it looks natural. <coughs> yes. Um, you know, some of the rock benches that we've used, if we use, instead of using the other benches, if we use these, these are more for just a quick stop. You can't be sitting there for a long time. Um, they're not that comfortable. They're comfortable for a quick respite, and then you got to get up and go. Um, these small little rocks here in the middle are um, some of the um, different alternatives that people have used in some of our parks for um, uh, adventure play for kids instead of having a playground. Lisbon Park, which we talked about in the last meeting, that didn't have a playground. It has these kind of rocks in it. Um, the bollards, like I said, I don't think it's, this park is for those. These are a little bit more lit. This is for our bigger park. This is Salvador Park that we just finished, um, which is a lot bigger and it's a, it's a different type of um, look and a different type of use than we would be looking for for this park. Um, these are what the entrance ways look like. It's, it's, it's the aluminum fencing and we use the natural uh, rocks as the pillars and posts and so we break it up so you just don't have metal all the way across. Um, it gives it kind of a natural element interspersed throughout so it, it, and it meets a lot of the different um, aesthetics that we're looking for from a city perspective. Um, there's, there's, how, there's a way of doing the, the limestone rock and covering it through with landscape. Like landscape is an example of ground cover um, that you can use. Uh, it's hard to, obviously, it's hard to park on something like, like that in that type of landscaping. Um, As a resident owner, if you have concerns of your swale, though, you are allowed to plant swale plantings that are approved by the state. It's at your expense. Uh, we can put you in touch with our green space management team, but you're allowed to plant those as long as you meet their requirements of what type of materials you plant. So it's true? Specific, yeah, oh yeah. So you're allowed to do that, but it's at your own expense. It's not at the state's expense. Okay. There's a package that we can give you that's from, it's a different department, it's not our no, department. I, I, Trust, I'm a builder. I build a quarter. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so you're allowed to do it. Oh, I don't work together. No, they I just have to be approved. The materials have to be approved by the city. Okay. Yeah. Next slide. Yep. 
So play equipment. This is just example. It's not what we're going to put in there. Um, but this is a two to five. The only reason why we show these kind of, of play equipment, because this is the style that we're doing now, which is natural elements. Instead of having like the metal stairs, and the, we try to have stuff that looks like tree trunks, planks, uh, tree house type. It's more of a natural look. It's been very popular in some of our parks. Um, you go to the next one, you'll see another one that we do. This one, it's funny, you do something like this, but the one that we're putting in now, instead of that green slide, it's a log um, that we have. It looks like a big hollow out log, so you can do that as well. Um, all kinds of different things that, that give you a, a natural look. Yes, now, this, 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 this we just put it in because it's next to a water, right. piece of water, and it's got that mound in the middle. This is a little, a little, little crazier. Um, that's what only be if people really want play equipment there. So, um, and the reason we showed it too is if you take out the equipment, you could do still something with mounds yeah, and little you see, plates. From yeah, if you do the mounds and just like the little turtles and little things, I mean, you could still have something there if that's what's, 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 what's wanted. Um, we wouldn't do any. We wouldn't do something like that big, like the lilies up top. Um, <laughs> but this is just gives you an idea of different things that you could do. There's all kinds of different things. Now, a lot of the stuff that we've done recently is a lot smaller scale. The one in the middle, that's Venetia Park, and it's just that, and that's what the neighborhood wanted, so that's what we gave them. Um, the one above that is a little bigger one, the Home Tree Tree of Life. Um, that one is at Majorca Park. And Mallorca Park is is a playground park that's very popular. Um, I, I, I based on our discussion in the last meeting, now I want to maybe go and click. Measure. I want to measure because I see a lot of people playing in these parks, so I want to I want to get numerical uh, data. Um, the nets and the rocks. This is something we have at Betsy Adams Park. Um, and then you can do stuff that's very low profile, like the balance beams um, that aren't. A lot of a lot of height and small and little impact or you can do the mounds um, up top we have a couple of those in Salvador um, that have tunnels and you can go through so there's like a lot of different um, like, uh, opportunities to have if child equipment is, is requested if it's not then we move on um, I had a question from online that pertains to the, some of the features um, if you do the mounds with play structures versus a playground would you still need to do a fence yes, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so if you do, if you do, um, if you do play equipment of any kind, you do have to have fence because the, that wooden, I mean, that stone wall is not high enough. It needs to be 48 inches. So these are features that may be proposed, um, and this is what we'll just, when we have to put in for the grant, we have to tell them what the possibilities are. Doesn't mean that we necessarily do every single thing that's in the grant. Um, but that's the possibilities, and then um, as we move forward with, with construction and what the neighborhood really wants, then we're able to hone in on the specific details and, and the different um, items that will be funded by the grant. So these are the features that we just talked about. The observation desk will be in there. The walkway trail of some sort, it'll either be flexi paved or another uh, surfacing will be in there. The picnic table and benches, trash and receptacles will be in there. Um, then the rest of the stuff we look at whether the drinking fountain is in there, the mister, the play components, there's a sign. We will have perimeter fencing along the waterway. We don't know if we, right now, if there's no play area, then we won't have it on the, on the south side, on the entrance. We'll just have that wall there. Um, and then new landscaping and depending on what kind of lighting, a lot of times they, uh, neighborhoods just want up lighting just so it's not completely dark. But you know that's something that that we'll discuss as we go. <coughs> so um, what's next? So this is similar to a lot of our neighborhood parks. The estimated project budget is is six hundred thousand. Um, we already have about four hundred thousand that got funded, and we just got the money now. Um, what we're asking is the grant to give us another two hundred thousand, so we'd have a six hundred thousand dollar park. If we don't get the grant then the scope of the park will obviously be lesser because we won't have the funds, unless we're able to find money from other projects that are either delayed or canceled. We have several, we have about 40, 35 to 40 projects in the pipeline at any given time that are spaced out over five years. So 
those move depending on you know safety issues. Something becomes more urgent, something gets pushed back. So there's always a possibility there could be state funding, but I mean uh, city funding. But we're hoping that we can get the state funding to help fund it. Um, our grant application is at the end of this week. That's why we're having this meeting. Um, we'll be turning in the application on Friday. Um, so then, what we look at is the grant funding cycle. You know, they they give they'll let us know mid 22 if we get it, but we won't get the money till mid 23. So then, then starts the the process, and and the process is we have yeah right. So we're meeting today on the grant. Our next step is as we're working, we have money and we've already retained an architect for this um, uh, project. So we're still in the concept phase and we're still working through um, what we're going to do in terms of um, a more, because all they gave us was a concept. They're still working on a contract with the city to, ha to have a design to then actually have um, a, a more exact plans and working with the community. So we're going to have a follow-up meeting and we're going to come back to you in uh, the first half of 2022. Um, more exact with an architect in tow to look at what the community wants and so we can we can integrate all that into a design and then um, we'll have permitting and, and procurement it's going to go anywhere from six to nine months and construction timeline is nine to twelve months as we talked about in my previous meeting we are running into something where hopefully as COVID we get further and further away from COVID and you know you're in construction we're running into problems where uh, materials are delayed like we started a, 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 a project at Maggiore Park and we just found out our playground shipment is delayed six months. So materials have been delayed. Hopefully as we go, that'll go away by the time we're ready for construction, but we're not sure. Um, so, and there's always a um, possibility of delays. Some of our projects get done right on schedule. Some get delayed for all kinds of reasons, whether it's permitting, whether it's we find something with drainage, maybe there's a problem with, you know, water or electric and we have to, we have to mitigate that. So hopefully, we don't see any of that here so far. Um, you know, all the surveys that we've done, everything's been pretty good. So that's our hope um, of what we, we can do. Um, and if we get the grant money, it's going to allow us to do more things, regardless of what those actual features are. It'll be dependent on the, on the, on the community. So this email, parksproject.coregivers.com, you can email us at any time with any comments or additional questions. If there's something you forgot or something you didn't get to today, um, we'll, we'll be able to answer it to you. And we'll also put this presentation on our website, um, which is, what's the website? CoreGables.com backslash parks project. So we have all our projects, anything that's in queue gets put on that web page. Um, this live recording gets on the web page, and then we normally open up what's called a 30 day commentary window. Um, so as we go through these community meetings, we allow people to comment after the fact as well. We keep it open up for an extra 30 days to receive any commentary. Are there any questions for us? Well, something I wanted to share just because it's not in the presentation, but we do our green space management. They did an assessment. There's a lot of uh, five percent of minus in that space, and there the city's going through a, a phase where they're removing those. So some of those have been identified for removal. Um, and normally when they do that, it doesn't require tree mitigation because they're evasive. Uh, so just sharing that with you. The, the direct neighbor did request, but some of those stay. So that's separate from our project, but just to share that with you, that's currently going on right now. Well, even though we don't have any questions, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask a question. Um, in terms of, of that park space, um, as, a, as people that are here, what do you envision um, being in there? Is it more of a passive space that has the walkway and the, and the viewing deck and that's it? or? Play equipment because we've heard that people want to play equipment, but we don't. We don't know. That's just hearsay right now. Uh, and you know, we'll have further meetings on it. But um, you know, this is more of a, a, a passive space. There, and like I said at the beginning of the meeting, we have had you know requests over the years to open this this space up. That it's a beautiful waterway space, and the fact that access is restricted to um, to the police is, it, I mean. We're just wrapping up the meeting, but yeah. this is now open to comment in. Oh. Oh. Was it at seven That's okay. Oh, join us. Well, I'll yeah. I'll jump in. I'm on Bill Moore. 
Right. And uh, for Fillmore and Blue are heavy traffic. So, um, and, and the roundabout, when people, the issue is that people go from either Blue and go down to Fillmore to get to Riviera and then go in US 1. So that right turn, the roundabout doesn't do much, they're just fly by. You read it, the theater read it, the two speed bumpers. I don't know if they do much to mitigate speed because they were before rubber and now it's concrete. Um, so my concern, I have kids. I don't live in Gilmore right now, but we will eventually next year. Um, so my concern is, do I see myself walking with the kids and some guy driving, some somebody driving full speed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, concerned, I'm concerned for that because I, there's no, there's no uh, sidewalk no, in right. either way. So no, there is. That my concern is that it's, it's gonna yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I'm not sure what the city's sidewalk plan is in this neighborhood. Um, we'll find out, but there is an any. No, oh, there you go. So you would know. We've been, we've been dealing with this for the last yeah. 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> so everything, as far as the neighborhood is concerned, the sidewalk, the roundabout, uh, the speed bumps that don't work, uh, this whole configuration of there of the roundabout is, as of as of, of today, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Uh, so we're very concerned because he lives in the corner, he lives in the other corner, and they that live like. We've sure. had so many issues with the city, with accidents. Um, we've had uh, one casualty a few years ago. Um, we don't have a sidewalk, and it's extremely hard even to get out of our driveway. I cannot even think of people walking comfortably to go to this park, because we're right there. We don't go to the park. We don't go, we don't go to there for anything. Is there a... a, 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 a so and we are not responsible for this side of the project, mm -hmm. but we can relay it to the respective departments. Um, is there a request from the neighbors in the community? Is there something that, that you see? Like like something that we can look at as for suggestions like to get for that roadway. Like I said before, my dog got killed there two years ago, crossing right there. Right. They ran him over. Um, it's just really bad to, what, four or five months ago? He had a car yeah, in, we, in his wall. Yeah. yeah. So, we've, we've, we've been dealing with this for the past. 26 years, yeah. we've been living there for 26 years, and we had the same problem. We had countless meetings with the, uh, right. the city, and, uh, you know, it depends on who you're talking to, and if they, they say one thing or another. It's not, my, it's not our problem, it's a problem of Miami Dade County, uh, because Blue Road is uh, the county road. Something that happens so, is we've seen a couple of examples of this. Once you build something, that now addresses the need for children, now it suddenly becomes a priority because you've built it that they have to assess it and make a change. It does help. Um, we've seen it some of our park properties that, you know, because I'll be honest with you, many a times, I mean, some, some of them are not, but most of our neighborhood parks, there's never, we never have a long debate or discussion on what goes in the park. It's outside the park. It's the, the traffic, it's sidewalks. It's, so we have found that, um, as we've built these, then things have progressed. There's either been, you know, in some cases, I want, I, I, unfortunately, this circle doesn't work, but I've seen where, where circles where apparently they work. Um, but, and, and I'm not sure, I'm not, I wish I was, I could be more of a, an expert in traffic. I don't know if it's a speed table that helps. I'm not sure what it is, but. It's, I'm sorry, it's the time. I, on yeah. this one yeah. particularly, because there are runabouts right. in corner tables, I, I drive a truck. Right. That, they're big, uh, so, it's a so in order for me to go by the roundabout, I really have to go slow, right. turn the car to one side and turn the car gotcha. to the other side. Gotcha. On this one, when I'm, again, Blue Road, I'm going Billmore, I can swim by. And the thing goes from Billmore to Blue Road either way. Cool. Well, that, I mean, we, we can relay that. And, yeah, and, 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 and we got a while, we got a while for this park project, so it's not mm -hmm. like it's being built tomorrow, but... Um, that is something that that we will look at has to be addressed. We, we've had plenty of meetings about it. We yeah. we barely got those speed bumps on there after what eight years. <laughs> I'm beating the meetings uh, even at the other house. We had a meeting with Chief Hudak and everybody in there. Yeah. The fire that the city should have, I mean, but a fire, the, is thick. The thing is, so many letters and so many 
pictures and uh, information of people in accidents and even in problems and unfortunately. And, yeah, unfortunately they say they're never gonna they, they they try to change it but they can't because the fire truck comes That's what I wanted to tell from the station oh, up Billmore and goes up blue. That's why that that's a roundabout. That's why it is that well, you can fly. So yeah, that's why you can go through it. So the fire truck the fire truck for the fire truck to go through. But I don't but understand it, why it you makes sense for the truck fire truck to take Run out of yeah. We've tried everything. Unless they got to hit one of these houses that are right there. Yeah. We've tried everything about that. No. Right. They have response times that they have to meet to get to any residence within a certain fire station. So they look at all of that depending on who they have to service. So if you have to go down the road because there's a, you know, something going on, they have to be able to get there. Um, but something that could work is more of a stop sign approach. But putting stop signs in, this goes back to county. And that's the hard thing is having that dialogue with the county. We found that a couple of examples, Venetian Pool is one of those, uh, where we've tried, and that's a heavily used site. Uh, we tried to work with the county because the soda was, was one of those county ones, and they refused to do a traffic study until we justified it with youth and children. So we started saying it's not about the 600 people that go there every day. As soon as we said, hey, children are crossing that street every day because they're going to swim lessons, and we started having a measure of that, then yeah. they invest in a traffic study, and then they put up you know, barriers, stop signs, et cetera. But it, it's a process. Like we also did it on University Road and the Youth Center when we did the crossing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's things that we can do, um, and we will definitely bring it up, absolutely. Um, and if it, it becomes, it, you know, sometimes, <laughs> as Kalina said, it, if you incorporate the child safety portion of it, sometimes we're able to, to get a little bit more movement, a little more traction on something. But I don't even know what that something would be. I, I'm not a traffic expert. So can, can the city override? <laughs> No, not on the steps of road. Not on county road. And yeah. county like, road is Bill Murray City? No, those are the So there's collector blue. roads, and then there's, you know, some of the collectors fall under under county. So I, I think no Bill Murray County? I, I, I know Blue Road is county. One. one is more important than the other one. So mm -hmm. there is no way they can put uh, a stop sign on the same thing because one something like that. Yeah. You, know, you, have a, you cannot do the same because one is residential and the other one is business. Yes. So that's the one problem. The other problem is the firefighter, that's the route of the firefighter. The other problem is this, this slope. When you come from Blue Road, it's just things that are, you know, are in there. It's not a, so somehow, the yeah. that's part of the problem. With the slope, they mm -hmm. go really fast. You fly through there, and you go into my house. Right You're there. in Gilmore? Yes. Yeah. Three times. So I can tell you, 26 years, and so it is, it is, it is all the, ch the things are, you see, it's not that the city doesn't want to do anything, just that it is the county, it is the city, but it is the residents, so somehow if, if that will help. It will be great, because I wish I can see people, but even walking on Blue Road to, to Ponce, you have to see, I mean, it is incredible. We can walk through there. I go, Sarah and I were there last week, because we were doing the door hangers for you guys, and... Uh, we realized how hard it is and dangerous mm -hmm. because I parked on the swale just to cross over Blue Road. So. And I, I canvassed Blue Road all the way to the end of the stop sign, and I apologize for walking in your property, but that was the only way to safely commute um, to give you your door hanger. Maybe a sidewalk will be will be great, or if children that will help. Sidewalks are always very potential because a lot of the residents don't want them. But if this is a community where the residents are in agreement and they want something like that, then we can relay that message. Yes, I think there's a sidewalk program. The sidewalk program requires the homeowner to be okay with the sidewalk to go in front of their, their house. Right. Uh, a few years ago. But yeah. you, you, and you, you can do only one, on one side, right? Only on one side, like a lot of streets. You do it, whatever. Do it. I, Forget about the right so side. Do it on, <coughs> everybody agrees. It's just that that was the problem, that nobody in the block would agree. Mm -hmm. Right. On the, like, for example, I didn't want it on my side, because that would take away from the, the very little space that I have for parking. Right. That would take it away. Yeah. So, but the, the, people, the people that in my sidewalk, they refused. And the other people on the sidewalk across the street, I guess they did too because they never yeah. got through. Yeah, I think My question did. is, if you guys have, in, uh, if you're at least putting this into a plan and you foresee having some kind of park here, what about parking for the people that we know are going to drive up to the little park at Billmore that is right on the water and it's so pretty and now you could go fishing, little Tommy. What so the, we, what found, we just parking? opened up five right before COVID hit us. We opened up five new what are called neighborhood parks. 
no parking infrastructure. They're designed to be walkable parts of the neighborhood, to be used by the neighbors. Unfortunately, when things are new and novel, people do drive because it's what's brand new. It's beautiful. Oh, look what the city just built. So then there's a kind of like a period, almost of a year, is what we've seen where people are parking on swale. So that's why there's a swale program for the, the, the planting. So if a resident homeowner wants to go ahead and plant something on their swale, they can, as long as they meet the requirements of the city, what kind of um, plantings you can plant there. So there's a swale package program that we can share with you it's through a different department called Green Space Management. They can share that and it basically is the requirement of what you can park and uh, plant there to prevent people from parking on your swale if you have people using the swale parking. Uh, but ideally it's really a design not to have people drive there. But we found that with especially those five, that first year, it's novel, it's new, people do drive up uh, there and they look for And parking. a lot of those five had, a couple of them had pretty big playgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you know, but it, it does dissipate. Um, it gets old pretty quick because they're not big parks. I mean, you do have that you do have that um, viewing deck, but it's not gigantic. It's on a boardwalk, uh, and you know, right now as we were talking, I, I see the guys that fish along that that other, near, near the blue pipe uh, yeah. on there. So um, it's, I, I don't, you know, and right now nobody's allowed in the park. So. Um, there's, you know, you. when we design it, we can do one of two things. We can leave this area open, this grass area open, or we can put ground cover so nobody can park there. Um, and that's something that we'll bring to you as we go further into the design. Um, and it'll be your determination to decide it. Now, if you want to leave it open just in case somebody parks there because they're going there and they park there, we can do that. Um, we've had a couple of parks that have left their swales open around the park because they're just like, let the cars park there. And then we've had other parks where they didn't want anybody to park anywhere, and we just ground covered the whole thing. Um, now, parks that don't have um, play equipment, from what we've seen, have a lot less visitors. Um, we just had that discussion in the last one where, um, you know, the one park that doesn't get a lot was the one that doesn't have play equipment. So, right. you know, this and this. The end of this, right. But um, the ones that, that have play equipment will, will have more visitors. But, you know, it's interesting because when I've gone to some of these parks on the weekends, I, and now now they're a little older, um, you know, it's, it's been a year and a half, I see people playing in it, but I don't see a lot of cars. So um, I don't see any cars, actually. So I don't know if I'm, it's just lucky that that's when I'm there. Um, we really have only had um, the issue with um, cars in the one, one of our parks, and that park, it, it, it became, um, because of the high fencing and the open <coughs> area, it became kind of like a de facto dog park. And people started bringing their dogs there. So then they started driving there. So we had to, we had to reinforce the rules and take people out with their dogs. And now that's gone away. Um, but here, you wouldn't have that. You, you can't have dogs in this park because they'll, they'll just jump over that wall really quick. So you, you know, and because of all the traffic. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be worried about it like you are in places that have four foot, four foot high fences. Walking there is a big ordeal, mm -hmm. even walking to that yeah. little part. Driving is completely, I mean, parking, I don't know where. I mean, right. the, the, the whole, the whole, the street, the roundabout, the lack of space where to park, the fact that you cannot walk, because we live there, we cannot walk through the street. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's a, we do, um, but it, it, it is, it, it's a park space now, it's just, it's not accessible, and we've been given the, the directive to make it accessible to, for people, so um, I will find the anecdotes that I get, the people that, that come to me, is a lot of them are on bikes, so that seems to be people that visit, oh, I was riding, I saw it, how come I can't go in? There's a chain on it, why, police order, I can't go in, and so, and that's actually how it started, that this became a commission priority. To, to develop this area. Um, and it's one of the only park spots we have on the waterway. It is, it is yeah. a very that, nice spot, actually. Yeah. But well, that's going to bring more people. <laughs> no, no parks have water. I, I, well, true. And, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't be disingenuous and say, I'm going to build a park and hope nobody comes. Oh, you yeah. know, you build a park for people to enjoy. enjoy it. Well, my hope is the people that live there enjoy it. And over time, that bears out. But maybe in the first year it might not. But I know five, six years down the line, we have some of our parks like that. The people that use it are the people that live around them um, because they're small. They're not big attractions. 
something so, that helps with that is the way we design is we have a level of service map. So the idea is that you have a walkable, yeah, I didn't use it for this one because it was for the other one, yeah. but we should probably include them in the PowerPoint so yeah. it helps. But the idea is that to show that within every community there's a walkable park. So if you meet that standard, then you never need to have people driving anywhere because they have a park that's walkable within a five or ten minute walk. So that's what we're trying to meet when we look at property acquisition or repurposing property so that you never have to drive anywhere because you have and, a park in your community. And to be honest, what we've seen just in, in interviewing people that we see that drive up to places, it is residents. You're not getting a ton of people outside of the city that are going to drive into the city for a park of this size. Um, you know, because if, if you're driving, if you live outside the city and you're driving to a park, there's a lot of bigger parks right outside the city that are worthy of a drive. 80 Barnes, Tropical, those aren't that far. If you're already out of the city, or Douglas Park on 37th and, and um, on the other side. So, um, how about the park? Well, and that's a huge facility. You have yeah. tennis, yeah. you have lighting. But it's exactly, and Salvador is different. Not, not many right. and, 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 yeah. and Salvador has and Salvador has parking. We have parking lot and we have perimeter parking. Um, we have a couple of parks like that. Phillips has perimeter parking, has a garage next to, right next to Publix that you can park there too. Um, those are bigger. We call those more neighborhood destinations like regional parks. Um, they're, they're bigger, they're three acres in size, um, and, and they have a lot of amenities. This isn't going to have a lot of amenities. Like Salvador's got tennis, playgrounds, a pavilion, Pickleball courts, um, you know, hopscotch, or you know, it's got all kinds of things in it. Whereas this is going to have a viewing deck and a trail and some places to sit. So it's a small scale, and it's just for that neighborhood is what we try to do. A uh, Ruth Bryant, you know, Ruth Bryant Owen Waterway Park is similar to that, and and that's why like Ruth Bryant Owen Waterway Park actually has it has a barbecue circle in it, and it, and it has boardwalk. a long boardwalk, and it's not, and it doesn't have sidewalks. And it's right on the corner of Granada and Bird. Ruth Bryant Owen. It is as busy a, as an intersection oh. as you're ever going to find. Okay. Granada it's right, and Bird. Yeah, and the yeah. water. They have a little house that was dedicated for the use of the Girl Scouts. Yeah, oh. the, Girls, oh. the Girl Scouts used to camp there. Oh. And you have a waterway there. And to be honest with you, I have the house. Yeah. Yes. Right. And that oh, one actually. The Girl Scout house. Now it's vacant. And that <laughs> one actually has a driveway that goes through the middle. And if somebody wanted to park, they can park next to the house in the back if they wanted to, because there's a lot of area. The park is empty, and it's it's and, and it's not a little viewing deck. This is you could fish off of that thing, and you get to see the the golf course across. It's beautiful views, um, but there's no sidewalk there. Um, there's no parking there, and so the access and it's a really busy roadway. So it just gets used by the neighborhood, you know. And it's not a lot of people. It's a few, um, and you know it's, we had a discussion on the last meeting. Not every park has to be attended by 100 people, um, you know. Having an environmentally friendly space, instead of having a house built on it, sometimes it's its own value to the neighborhood. Um, and if it's just a few people that get to enjoy it, but it's those people that live in that neighborhood, then there's value in that as well. Um, so it doesn't always have to be 100 people coming and enjoying it. Um, some of our parks are that. Um, but you know, I don't foresee this one being that. Um, just know. alone that you don't have a restroom in a park? That limits the usage to no more than an hour. No one's going to stay for more than an hour in a space that doesn't have a restroom for children. Or just someone that's you know, very good at holding it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the sake of the direct neighbors, I know they walked in a little bit late, but I figured we can quickly show them some of the, the, the site amenities and move forward to tie oh, Thank you. Thank no, you. you're welcome. This, 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 <laughs> these, these, these amenities, as we, we stated, um, these are just some of the things that we do in our other park properties. So they're kind of our standards. The benches, the picnic tables, the pet weight station that we use, which is called the Gladiator. I didn't mention that, but it's, uh, I love the name. Um, and, and it's uh, and our bike rack. These are the kind of ones that we're using as our standard. The if we do a water fountain, it's, we do a, a three tier with a uh, a bottle filler, um, and then that's our that's our standard uh, trash can. If we do a, a, a signage, it's usually in the form of a bronze plaque. If you go to Betsy Adams Park, they have one there. Um, that's our mister. We have a mister at JC and we have a mister at Betsy Adams. Those two are bigger parks than this. Um, so, you know, in terms of some of the natural features, the flexi pave, which is something that would be maybe in this, that's that, um, it's a soft, cushiony substance, but it looks almost like a mulch trail. Um, and it's also down here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, those little cap rocks are stuff that, you know, Kids can climb on and, and, and jump low tier, doesn't you know, becomes its own natural play equipment. 
the rock benches are, you know, for temporary sitting, you're not going to be able to, you know, ha hang out there for a long time because they're not comfortable. They're just for a respite, a quick five, ten minutes, rest your legs and move on. Um, now, if we wanted lighting, that's just an example of the lighting that we did at Salvador. But once again, bigger scope, much larger park. As you can see, that's, that's the playground that we just put in. Um, that, you only see a little bit of it, but it's like a 50-foot zip line that goes all the way across. Very cool, um, but not for this kind of park. Uh, perfect for Salvador. People are raving. And, and that, in terms of use of park, that's anecdotal. We just, just go out there any time it's packed. Um, traditional fence design. Oh, and this is our fence design where we want to do aluminum interspersed with that coral rock to give it a natural look and not just be aluminum or wrought iron or steel all the way across. Just These are examples of play grounds, you know, based on the early returns we're getting, we're probably not going to get that kind of play equipment. So. <laughs> the playgrounds for those over 50? Two to five. Well, you know, I, the next one, the next one, it, you know, five to 12, I've been known to climb a few of those myself. <laughs> Actually, you know, every time we open a new playground, you'll see, you'll see me in Facebook climbing everything. Just yeah. test it. If it can take my weight, then it's a sturdy playground. This is more out there design, but the reason we showed it is because it has waterway access and, and because the mounds. the mounds. And these are smaller things you can put in little rocks, little play features. So it doesn't have to be something big. It could be more play elements that are more nature inspired. These are some of those nature inspired. And these are the nature inspired, and some of them are small, like the one in the middle is Venetian Park, and that's all they have. They just have that little bit there, and they're happy with that. Um, it's for smaller children. Um, for bigger children, up above it, we have that at, at um, Mallorca Park. That's the home tree, tree of life, that I like to call it. Um, and it gets a lot of use. And down in the corner here is Bethiana's Park. Um, and those climb, it's got climbers with the nets, and, and it's a natural design. So we try, to, we try to incorporate that natural look so it looks like it's made out of trees and wood and rock. So it's not, you know, and there, some neighborhoods have, you know, we, we just finished J.C. Park, that's a different kind of park, and it's got playground with lime green and orange and shocking colors, and that's what that neighborhood wanted. So that's what we gave them. Um, so some neighborhoods want the nature inspired, and some want oranges and greens and yellows and pops and colors. Let me, I'm sorry, let me ask you this. Your intent, though, with the park, if you want to understand, is to emphasize the water. So whatever you do, and I, I yeah. know that the neighbors so high. <laughs> And that seems to be the consensus in the room is to not play equipment, I think. <coughs> we did have some feedback from the uh, Zoom that they would like to see a uh, play equipment, a uh, water fountain, and a dog station in here. So there's so, a little bit of interest. And, and as we talked about, you know, the steps that are next, you know, this is for us to, to, to present to the community that we're, we're moving forward with the project and we're, we're going for grant funding. As we go, you know, we have an architect that we're going to work with. We're still signing the deal. We haven't come with a deal. I don't know if our CIP people are on. Um, they're, they're working on, on solidifying the deal, and then we'll get an architect on board. We'll start doing a framework of a real design. This is just concept. Um, you know, they got to do surveys. they got to get the exact scales and everything. This is just a picture. Um, and then we'll come back to the neighborhood, um, you know, before summer of 2022, um, and we'll have already have applied for the grant, and then we'll start honing in on the exact different features that you want to put together. And then from there, you know, we're not, we're not sure coding, and it takes time. It's going to be a, a, a few years because there's that 9 to 12 month construction, there's the 6 to 9 months for procurement, there's permitting, permitting falls through, there's, you know, there, we've, we've seen some projects get done. Like JC Park got done in 18 months. It was an existing site, so you yeah. just replace the playground yeah. faster. But this is a new site. Yeah, you know, we, we Salvador the, the Salvador Park one with the zip line took close to four years because it was a it was a it was just an open grass field, and then we ended up having to do drainage mitigation that added a year to it because then we had to add stuff to it. So I don't think we're going to have that here because this this has been in existence for a while as a natural space. Um, and we're not going to put anything as grand as we did in Salvador where it required artificial turf and everything else. So I don't anticipate any of those things, but you'll still have a couple of years. Retaining wall, 
Right. So that's, yeah, we more. need to work with the county. Anything that's yeah. waterway related, well, I have that's, that, that's, I have. that was my last thing. It might take some more time because you're getting derm involved and you're getting into the water and the, the pilings for the observation deck because you're going into the water. So you know your construction. That stuff sometimes gets held up from environmental studies. You have to do things to make sure you're not damaging the shoreline and all that. So that could take a little bit more time. So we're not. We're not here to say, yeah, this is, you're going to have a brand new park in a couple of days. It's, 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 it's a long, drawn-out process, um, but we got to start sometime. And so this is this is step one. Um, you know, but it's it's not anything that's on the immediate horizon within the next few months or anything like that. We see an average three to four years from this point for a brand new for a brand new area like this. So so it's going to take some time. Um, and. Luckily, the one like like the, the project we just uh, that we just did an hour ago, that one we don't even have the funding yet. That funding comes later on. This one we just got the funding. The funding came free. The the funding without the grant funding, the four hundred thousand. October one. Yeah. October one. Yeah. October one. Um, it's a little less than four. I think it's three ninety seven. We'll, we'll make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll 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 add three thousand from something else. Somebody won't get a, a dog way station. Um, so at least we got the funding there. So we, that's why we're able to at least, we're a little bit ahead because we can hire an architect. So, and we can start the design process. And what you missed earlier, we talked about the, the right of way that's right intersecting the property next to your property. So there would be no hardscape built into that property. That's really you're just going to service the access point to service the, the little boat that has to do the maintenance on the canal. So really this would be flip flop, whatever goes in, it would be, this would be more the pedestrian access point versus this would be the service point so that this road really just serves as the access point for service to get to that little access for the canal. And once again, this is not the scale. This is a concept, the approximate, the survey. <coughs> It'll be a lot more exact when we, when we go with an architect and a design. But this, this design was done, um, I mean, our landscape management team worked on it as well. And it, so then we'll present it. And what we said before, originally the design was to have terracing instead of fencing, but then, um, you know, the danger of animals crawling up there, crocodiles and stuff that um, our city manager actually said, nope, no terracing, put a fence on there, right? I said, okay, we'll do that. And, and I think you guys were able to meet with uh, Tina Bell, right? Yep. We came out, yeah. I know there's a plan to have some of those spike of fence mines. Does now. Oh, okay. Well, we don't actually now. We move in a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Well, this is Yeah, yeah. Well, is the neighbor across from you? Oh, hi. I'm, I'm Kevin, Kevin, and this is Anique. Anique. One. And, one. And, and he's at the other house? Okay. Lenny, pleasure to meet you. You're right. Your name is Anique. I'm on the blue right here. You're right here. That house right here. The one under. Okay. No. The one. Right, he's you know what? he's where the arrow is. Oh, the picture. There we go. Mm -hmm. There, you no. were right over here. Yeah, that's me. And one is open up that way, yeah. across from you. Okay. And I'm on yeah. the side of you. So when we have loud music, now we have to call. Yeah. 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 The person one is going to be having loud music. <laughs> <laughs> and then we mentioned that this this core rock wall here is historic, so that that little low line wall is not going to go anywhere. Could you see? The park. You see the space they got the park. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but they wouldn't I, be able to block this because you know no, that's going to be. Active. But I, I, I agree with you. I think but it's an. I, I right parked to that rain. I know. I mean, they do it now. at the fish. No, no. I agree with you. I parked there yeah. when I had to go look at the park. I have to park somewhere, you know. <laughs> so I parked there. Um, so I know. I know what you're saying. I, I agree with you. So and that that we, we that's what we have to determine as we move on is do we want to put ground cover there or do we want to leave it. And that'll be up to up to you guys. And like I said, it's gone both ways. I've been shocked where some some neighbors are like, "No, leave it. Let them park there. I don't want them parking anywhere else." You know. So, and some are saying, "No, no, don't put it, uh, cover it so nobody can go." From our visit there, we saw that um, over here, it seems like a lot of people walk in. So even though this is chained off, and then this seems to be like an access. Yeah, they walk, walk inside there. there near, so the hill is all like flattened out, and there's like a, a walkway, a makeshift walkway that's been kind of. And they also go over the. Um, over the little railway here yeah, on the other have, side. They just, because that's quick. They have, they mm -hmm. have um, that tree there. Oh my that God. I've been taking fruits from there for the last oh. 20 some years. It's neat, but okay. it's the most delicious tropical fruit ever. 
So ever since my girls were very little, we walked there with a public plastic bag, and so I hope they will remove that tree from there. That was probably five years, but mine is okay. Yeah, I think the only plan was to consider a basis, and after Irma, they kind of looked at re. Yeah, the ficus benzamina. Where? I'm sorry. Yeah. Where is your ficus? So, uh, ficus benzamina, they're kind of like um, they're these. Yeah. These nice, and they actually have a nice shade canopy that people like them for climbing. They don't do well during storms. Um, they actually are supposed to kind of drop roots from the top down to kind of keep the, the top heavy crown in place, and, and they don't do well obviously with hurricanes. So, um, they're not native to South Florida. They were exported, you know, almost 100 years back from very small well, we trees did, and that grown. But I think you did mention that I would talk about some of the ones that are near your property. Or right. Yeah. You guys so requested two. We're going to keep the two, yeah. and then the ones inside are going to get Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, she mentioned that. Call yeah, yeah, she mentioned that. It's your problem, then. <laughs> 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 I'm glad it's not near your, your seawall. Right, right. None of them. The the I had one that knocked it down. Yeah. And I got rid of the tree. Okay. Yep. Oh. But we will replace them with trees as big as so. Eventually. No, so they, hard to not existed. You can't get them that big right now. It's, yeah, that's yeah. that's impossible. I mean, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's that would take up your whole budget. <laughs> that would take your whole budget. We a couple of them that we just replaced. We did um, they did a gumbo limbo, which is more fast growing. Um, so even though you don't get them to size, they grow pretty fast. <laughs> we replaced at a, at Salvador Park. Replaced the sea grape with a gumbo limbo, and yeah. those you can get a little bigger. Um, we did get. I did get a. Strangle fig? What was it? No, you don't I, have a strangle fig. Not a strangle fig, but it looked like one. I forgot what it was. We did a Durango. We were able to get a big one there, like 20 something feet. Um, but those are those are hard to come by. I mean, you can get them, and they're expensive. They take up a lot of budget. But you, you're not going to get tiny. You're not going to have little twigs. You're, you're going to have mature trees. They're just not going to be 30 feet. You're not going to get the crown of a canopy right away. All right. Do we have any other questions for anyone? Is there anybody else on Zoom? Uh, no, there's one more question. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate well, it. Um, sure. It's great to meet all of you. And uh, like you said, we have that email, parksproject.corgibles.com. If you have any other comments, you forgot something, just email us and we'll respond. And we will keep you um, informed as we move forward. When we have another community meeting, you'll get another door hanger from us. Um, and uh, like I said, it'll be a while. But, but we're moving. We're moving in that direction. Well, thank, you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, guys. If there's anything you can think of after the class, email us, any suggestions, any input. Yeah, we'll go to our Okay, thank you. Good to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. 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 Thank I'm moving from a lot to this.